Uh, so my name is Shanil Narayan. Um, I'm the clinic and shelter manager for SPCA. Uh, so basically my role involves uh, looking after the clinic. So SPCA has a clinic and shelter. We have animals in the shelter. So basically to manage and make sure uh, everything is uh, flowing smoothly uh, in the shelter and clinic and everything is uh, up to date basically just to run the clinic. Uh, SPC, I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but SPC is one of the oldest uh, animal shelter and charity in Fiji. Uh, it was set uh, way back in uh, June 15, 1953. So um, it was set up basically to uh, look after the uh, animals in Suva area, uh, stray and client owned. Um, so basically we look after stray dogs, uh, neglected animals out on the street, but um, we also have a clinic uh, which looks after um, uh, owned animals, if people have client owned animals, to provide basic veterinary service like vaccines, deworming, desexing, and all those sorts of stuff to clients, uh, and also be able to uh, run a shelter where we rehome uh, stray dogs. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, we have a shelter and clinic. Um, a lot of people get confused what is it. So, uh, basic clinic, uh, we run like a small clinic uh, to provide service to owned animals and um, Basic stuff, deworming, deep flea, uh, check up on animals, uh, we do desexing. Recently we got our x-ray machine, so we do a bit of diagnostism uh, as well. Uh, and whatever the funds are generated, so we, we charge at uh, bare minimum, like we charge at cost to the clients. So little, whatever profit is generated goes to our shelter. So we have a shelter at the back and we host, uh, uh, like house close to 120 animals. Uh, which we rehome later on, basically dogs and cats. Um, so all these stray and neglected animals, they come into the shelter. Our veterinary clinic team, they have a look at it, uh, make sure they're healthy, and then we rehome them. We find them homes. Um, so to run the shelter, we needed the clinic to get a little bit of funds from there. So basically, that's what SPCA is. It's a shelter and a clinic. Adoption-wise, the shelter-wise, um, for the past five years, we have been looking at six to seven hundred animals. That's the stray animals coming in uh, through the shelter and getting rehomed. Uh, Client-wise, on average uh, week, we see close to 50 to 60 animals. That's the client-owned animals, so that's the numbers we get. Because we are a charity, so everything depends on funds, uh, whatever the revenue is generated from the clinic. So funds-wise, uh, we have setbacks. Uh, sometimes we um, we are not able to afford um, more diagnostics uh, like uh, blood machines and all the stuff for our animals because we don't have the funds to get them. Uh, so we have to do cutbacks here and there. Like we could have more proper facilities if we have the funds there to have it. So that's one of our major issues. Um, uh, which is improving. We have seen uh, for past probably one or two years it's getting better. We're getting um, more clients who are willing to learn and you know the mindset is changing. Um, also we deal with cruelty cases. Um, we, uh, we have a small team who goes out and check on animals when we re get a report or something or cases. Uh, basically uh, someone just tying their dog out in the rain for too long. Uh, people throwing hot water, stoning, knife wounds, uh, poisoning cases as well. We get people who are poisoning their neighbor's dog because they had an issue or something with the neighbor, you know. Yeah, so basically in 2019, we reintroduced our outreach program, basically where we go out to um, uh, low income and uh, earning communities to do uh, clinics, to provide basic desexing clinic, uh, either free of charge or at cost. Uh, it had been really successful. We stopped doing it for a while because we just didn't have the funds and means to do it. But we are very um, happy that we had more volunteer vets coming in so we are able to redo these clinics. So our basic aim, we started this program, uh, CLAW, was to reach out to as many um, parts of Fiji as possible because we know a uh, lot of uh, areas like Western Division, uh, inland and islands they don't have veterinary service so our aim through this CLO program was to make sure um, we reach out to as many communities as possible and we're working on it uh, due to COVID-19 the current situation we are not able to carry out this uh, program it's not been on a halt because of our volunteer vets but basically these programs are run with the help of our volunteer vets 
but but uh, we're hoping as soon as 2021 comes and if the board is open we're able to get back on this okay. it has been pretty good and we actually have uh, seen the changes in people as well we see people coming to the clinic now who know basic stuff you know like that their pet needs deworming their pet needs the vaccination they should get uh, them these eggs at what age so people are actually making a request as well you know like to get stuff done so so far uh, the response has been good we also did like a trial uh, study on Benga Island to uh, try to see if we can uh, control the stray dog population you know to make sure uh, most of the dogs in Benga are desex and we managed to do that there's nine villages there and we went to all nine and desex it we are su supposed to do a second round of study and clinic as well and so far it has been well received like they're requesting for us to come over again and to do more work on the island uh, we do work closely with the Ministry of Agriculture here in Suva and the local uh, councils to um, look after this, mostly the stray dogs, like to do trapping, uh, do TNR programs. Uh, TNR is basically trap, neuter and release, where we catch uh, stray dogs, desex and release them. So we work um, with the MOA and uh, SCC in Suba area, Lami Town Council, Nassinu Town Council and Nosori Town Council. Um, this year we have been also working with the other shelters, um, Animals Fiji in Nandi, Pesh, uh, we have also worked with the Tamuni animal lovers in Tamuni. So we try to coordinate and work uh, and try to get the job done. Yeah. Uh, basically starts at home, that's what we say. Uh, so uh, educating yourself, educating your neighbors. If you see um, just normal people and groups as well, if you see someone is doing wrong, like if you see someone is hitting a dog or throwing stones, um, schools, uh, church groups, like people can talk to people, you know, and educate them. Um, also, you can come down to SPC, you can volunteer, like company groups, if they have staff groups, or again, schools and church groups, education uh, institutes and stuff, they can come down to SPC and volunteer their time, their expertise, like if you're good in a field or something, sometimes we do need like marketing people, uh, uh, just to come and volunteer in the shelter, you know. Uh, they can also uh, make donations if they want to. They can uh, run fundraisers for us and make donations to the shelter. Um, basically, a lot of people actually don't know what is SPCA and that we actually exist. So they can go and look SPCA up basically fast, that we would like to say. And yeah, and we are happy to help people out. Uh, a lot of people are actually scared to approach us as well in regard uh, again, education and awareness, like they, they're scared to ask for help. So if anybody is seeing anything being wrong done or if anybody needs something, uh, help with their pets or something, do approach our team and we'll see how we can help you guys out. Okay, so basically this is our cat uh, adoption area. Um, we didn't really have a space for cats to hang around and like to play and socialize until we got this space done. So we have uh, our adult cats here and they uh, so when people come for adoption, they have a place to view them and get to know the cats before they adopt them. So they can actually go in there and play with them. We also get a lot of uh, small kids coming in and they play with the cats and hang around. So uh, it's uh, easier to adopt an animal out which is more socialized. So once they're more playful and socialized, it's easier to find them home. So we get lots of kids uh, coming in, spending time with them. We have volunteers coming in, they spend the time with the cats. and. Then yeah, it's easy to find them homes. We have close to five kennel staff who basically look after the shelter animals. We divide them up into cats, dogs and puppies. Uh, basically cleaning, feeding, uh, making sure they have dry beddings. And then we also have a shelter nest who basically goes around, make sure they're deworming deeply, vaccines, uh, updated records and everything is done. So we have our shelter kitchen. This is where the food preparation and everything is done for the shelter animals. Uh, Joe is just getting the meat ready to be fed for lunch later on. Uh, lunch we do cook food for them so they used to cook food once they find home so he's getting that prep done. So in the front it's a bit noisy. So this is the TNR cages. Uh, TNR is a community partnership program so if you have like pets in your street and nobody really owns it, like stray dogs, and if you want to get them desex and get stuff done, so you can get in touch with us, so we help those people as well. So we go, we try to uh, walk with the local council, trap them, bring them in, 
bisex them and then release them back. And then the whole neighborhood looks after them and feeds them and basically takes care of them. Uh, it has been working well so far. We have processed close to maybe 20 animals this year. And this is like not own dogs, this is stray dogs, but people in the street are looking after them. So we have these cages for them. At the back, we have our adoption cages. We hold close to 20 dogs at a time for adoption. So basically, people can come and have a walk around, and if they're interested in adopting, they can come back and have a look at it. Uh, this side, we have puppies. You guys can have a walk later on. So all the puppies which are available for adoption, they're kept here. And then people can again come and view and then adopt them out. Uh, at the moment, we have close to, I think, so 60 puppies. Uh, which is quite a large number. We have been receiving a lot of litres and litres of puppies in the shelter. Um, and which can also be prevented if people just get their female dogs desex. And we're working really hard. That's one of our one of the big things we're trying to push across is people to get their dogs desex uh, to avoid litres and litres of puppies. Because what happens, they end up dumping them in parks, roadsides, basically outside in SPCA or just dumping them somewhere. You know? So if they get it desex, they don't end up with that problem there. Set. So we'll have a walk through. Uh, this is all the dogs for adoption. Um, at the back we have the mothers and puppies. This is where we keep all the the newborn puppies with their mothers who come together. So they're separate from the entire shelter because um, when they're young they easily get disease and they can get sick. So they're separate and all, all their cleaning and feeding is done separately as well. Uh, there's a specific kennel hen who's designed to look after them and to feed and clean them. So that's where the puppies and the mothers are kept. Uh, we keep them uh, until they're ready to move out for adoption. Um, anything coming in the shelter itself stays here for two weeks in the isolation unit. Until then we move them out for adoption. Social Plug Fiji. Click on the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest videos.